heroes are the people who do what has to be done when it needs to be done, regardless of the consequences. America's infant space program attracted many of these unsung heroes to break the bonds of Earth, punch a hole through the sky, and venture into outer space. Lift off. In September 1962, a 32-year-old Navy test pilot from San Francisco, California, was selected to become one of these daring astronauts. Part of the new nine, the second group of astronauts to be chosen by NASA, he became the first person to fly in space six times from Earth, seven times counting his lunar liftoff. John Young, an all-American astronaut. John's first space flight was with Gus Grissom in Gemini 3, the unsinkable Molly Brown, the first manned Gemini mission on March 23, 1965. Roger, John, your way, Molly Brown. You always liked to see John fly, and you knew that his missions were going to be great ones, and not only great ones, but entertaining. Early on, John had been assigned to develop food for space, but he was more inclined to bring a corned beef sandwich from Wolfie's Deli. Of course, Gus gave him grief for not having any mustard. There had been no official mission patch for Gemini 3, so years later, John had one designed. He wore it in memory of a fallen hero and friend, Gus Grissom. July 18, 1966, saw John Young as commander and Mike Collins as pilot on the Gemini 10 spacecraft. He uh, went up with Mike Collins and not only set a new standard for rendezvous, something we had to learn to move on to Apollo, uh, but not only rendezvoused with one uh, Agena spacecraft, but two on the same mission. A remarkable achievement considering we didn't know we needed to do Gemini and put all that together in three years. Apparently, this was also a tearful mission. Something in the spacesuit oxygen loop caused both astronauts' eyes to water up for a good part of the flight. John didn't say anything about this problem. He didn't want to be called a sissy. On his third space flight in May of 1969, John piloted Charlie Brown, the command module of Apollo 10. Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan were also on this mission that orbited the moon, completed a lunar rendezvous, and tracked proposed lunar landing sites. Rumor has it that they were monkeying with the thought of becoming the first crew to land on the moon. Apollo 16 would be his fourth flight on April 16, 1972. Preparing for this lunar exploration mission, John learned to be a rock hound and lunar rover driver. I was walking with them and I suddenly see this backpack jump in the air and I looked up and sure enough there was a rattlesnake that did its rattling. And Charlie was real excited, and so was I. And there was John Young standing three, four feet away from us, cool and collected like John is, and said, Houston, you wouldn't believe there is life after all on the moon. Come on, Charlie, let's go and collect some rocks. <laughs> With Ken Mattingly orbiting in the command module Casper, John Young and Charlie Duke guided the lunar module Orion onto the moon's surface. Ooh. Wow, oh, man. Oh, Ryan is finally here, Houston. Fantastic. Hey, 
Young and Duke set up scientific equipment and explored the lunar highlands at Descartes. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Off the ground, the <laughs> floor. There we go. Dead. They collected 200 pounds of rock and drove over 16 miles in the lunar rover on three separate geology traverses. Uh, when he drove that uh, rover on the moon, you knew that was going to be a scene which uh, was forever repeated, and it is. Then I'll tell you, Andy's never seen a driver like this. Okay, when he hits the craters and starts bouncing, it's when he gets his rooster tail. He makes sharp turns. NASA's first reusable spacecraft, the Space Shuttle Columbia would be John's fifth flight into space on April 12, 1981. Along with pilot Bob Crippen, the STS-1 mission verified space shuttle system's performance during launch, on orbit, and re-entry. The Orbiter Columbia was the first manned spaceship tested without benefit of previous unmanned missions. Also, the first winged re-entry vehicle to return from space to a runway landing. It weighed about 98 tons as John Young landed it on the dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Three, two, one, touchdown. Look about, Gilbert. Young's sixth flight was a spacecraft commander of STS-9 the first Space Lab mission in November 1983. With pilot Brewster Shaw, mission specialist Bob Parker and Owen Garriott, and payload specialist Byron Lichtenberg of the USA and Ulf Merbold of West Germany, they successfully completed all of their mission's objectives. Very uh, comfortable uh, moving on in here and beginning to activate the Space Lab. Getting to fly with John was just such a treat. Uh, an extra treat uh, as, as part of uh, my experience in, uh, in the astronaut program. I really enjoyed that. For 10 days, the six-man crew worked 12-hour shifts around the clock, performing more than 70 scientific experiments. The mission returned more scientific and technical data than all the previous Apollo and Skylab missions put together. A good round of applause uh, from Mission Control flight controllers. Since January 1973, John has served in various positions in the astronaut office, including chief astronaut. When John was chief of the astronaut organization, he always brought the point of view of the astronauts, the point of view of the astronaut safety, uh, to the equation and to the discussion. And uh, for that, you know, we're eternally grateful for the contributions that he's made in that regard. He's assisted in providing advice and counsel on engineering, operational and safety matters related to the space station, shuttle upgrades, and advanced human space exploration programs, as well as missions back to the moon and on to Mars. I can think of uh, an occasion flying from Houston to Kennedy Space Center with John. Uh, I was in the back seat of the T-38, and there we were talking about doing science on the moon. Just an incredible wealth of experience that he's brought to NASA and has inspired us all. John is uh, a man who can inspire people to do great things. The passion for the truth, the passion for exploration, the passion to explore. He wants to really know how things work, right? And that is what makes him go. If I knew what made John Young tick, I would figure out how to bottle it up, inject it into myself, and make it available to my entire astronaut corps. John has not a pretentious bone in his body. Uh, he says what he thinks, and that's what I think most people like about him. Uh, he's real been here 40-some years, and in all that time, he just 
contributed and continues to contribute and probably will even after he's retired. John Young, an all-American astronaut.